How are you high altitude crickets liking all this snow? With all this global warming. Well, you can't hide underneath the snow either. They're coming after you. Whether you know that or not, whether you want to believe it, whether you want to believe the guy behind the woodshed, whether you want to believe that you have something to do, whether you believe that Constitution was there, you wrap yourself up around it with the flag around that, and that did it all, and you didn't understand what I told you last, what I've been telling you all along that was confirmed in that court case back in February, Supreme Court, that the Civil War fundamentally changed the place they called the United States of America. Sort of what I've been talking about all this time. I figured all that out a long time ago. What's been harder is to figure out how to get people to understand what that was without all the, the, the psyop that goes on around it and to start looking a lot clearer at what's going on and start determining a better path through the problem and, and stop being the whiners that we tended to be, we turned out to be, that we really aren't living up to our forebears. I say forefathers, our forebears. It's a very slow slide into the stinking abyss. And so if you don't, being crickets, the being so quiet in the nation that was requiring that you step up to protect yourself and that would in, indirectly protect others. Again, that equity answer that required in any action to protect yourself and your rights, to vindicate your rights against the trespass, and those similarly situated. You're always speaking to the higher cause. And so if you don't quite get into that, then you're not going to, maybe you will never understand what I've been talking about. But hey, before I go too far and forget, this is a BTW RLM 319. For those of you on past cast, uh, broadcast, got to prod you a little bit. Recast, whatever you, wherever you find this broadcast in the past, you listen to that number, type it in if you want to, you don't have a link to this, this, where, where we started, where I got the information, you'll have a broadcaster entry that should pop up somehow and get you tracking in on where I got this information and you can track further to give yourself an idea on how to look at this. In other words, as I say all the time, I'm looking at what we call the news. I don't care what media you have it. It's all just a bunch of nonsense in my mind because you can look really sometimes at the titles. You can see within the context of a few passages what, what the truth is, but people look past it. And I say look for that truth, and then you figure out what needs to be done. It gives you a direction. You're not, you're not uh, well, lots of people want to say what ought to be. It, it, folks, it's what it is. What it is. And if you don't deal with things of what it is, you're likely not going to, you're just going to continue to complain and pretty soon the, the shackles uh, are tighter and tighter. And you'll end up making excuses on how that you've tried and uh, it doesn't affect you that much. And you'll just slowly and compliantly go into your servitude. Oh, I don't pay this and I don't pay that much and I don't do this. So I only pay that much. I only get the, they only come at me once a year. And you didn't realize when you looked, if you looked around and you actually took responsibility, none of these people that they call, that they call themselves authority, which uh, kind of euphemistically say authorita, it's the costume of authority, not actual authority. And then we have the other quote, pertinent or relevant thing that you need to figure out right before that is do they have the, or is it a subject matter that's within a jurisdiction that these people have to say? If you aren't even thinking, if you're not thinking that way and you don't identify the criminal that you're facing when they come after you, come at you, you're, you're missing the whole thing. It's not what it ought to be. It's what's in your face or what can be in your face. So I come here a decade now and try, and try to explain all that to you and getting these thoughts reoriented so when you get confronted, you have a better word in your mouth than probably 99.99% of the people. And for those of you that take that one little X, that little bit of .99999 uh, people, uh, the, the point 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 zero 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 one that that would actually actually take the next step and actually do things. You found that that's absolutely the fact. Absolutely puts you in a different condition. Doesn't mean that the criminal goes away. Like no different than if you heard of a bank robber robber coming out, he would just drop his gun and his bag of money that he just stole. Uh, he's not going to do that. And so, as I say on the broadcast and the Twitter, bad don't fix itself. We were supposed to not let it go bad, and when it did went bad, we we're supposed to arrest it. And we've lost all these concepts in ourselves, and we don't even know about that. So I come every every week to try to tell you, I don't care what the subject matter is. I just throw the things into my tabs just to give me something to talk about uh, without any other direction. Again, if you want to put a thumbs down on the broadcast, totally fine. I agree. If you don't have an agreement with me, that's fine. I know who you are, though, but that's okay. You can put that there. But I, I want to know your, I want to know what you think. I want to know what the point is, what the problem really is. And I, again, I... 
I would just have to tell you, you better bring your A game. I want to talk about substantial things, not nonsense. And a lot of things I see are nonsense when you get down to having to do something. Yeah, we can talk about philosophy all the time. But we're, when you have to go, when you have to actually go shoot the gun in the war, it's a little different, I think. I think a lot. And you know, I think anybody who's been there knows that. So we try to do that. I try to keep you out of the war, That we, even though we're in the war. We're trying to go through as a... As a and you're, you're like a counter movement inside this movement. That's the real. That's a real anarchist. You know, people make up this stuff so they don't have to do much but to complain and talk. But a real anarchist actually acts against the system and just talk about it. Oh, there's some talking, but it's not. In fact, the talking could actually be a diversion. In other words, you're making the talk a camouflage, aren't you? This is no joke about this war that we're up against. And, and uh, Again, you make certain decisions on how we how you approach it. It came up again in the mining district meeting this last week, and we were talking about what we, the last work uh, that was done to uh, send a, uh, a judicial notice to uh, the, the highest court in the land, so called, uh, to show them what the, they completely screwed up. And I told you I did what I told you I was going to do relative to that Tim's case, and explaining how their decision. To, the rationale in that decision was denied to the miners when they denied a remedy to the miner in equity. And so there's high-level stuff here that we can talk about, but I don't get to that because we're all still fighting amongst each other on whether or not we want to agree with what the guy behind the woodshed is saying, or whether or not that puts me in a position, or if I'm confused, or I don't I am confused, I want to learn more, and I keep, I'm trying to tell you after all these years of doing this stuff, just jump in somewhere that you just can't cotton it anymore. You can't handle the, the problem. Dig in there. You need that. You're going to need that anyway because you need to have to have something. You're going to have to put some skin in that game in order to, when they come attack that, even in all their divisive, if it's not a direct attack but a passive one, you're going to have to have enough in that, enough investment in that, that you're going to hang in there. Because it's easy for us to get walk away from our little fight. But we're entangled in a, quite a big deal. And I, I want to enter, uh, something came up this morning. I think I got this from Bob Renner over at the Effin site. No, I didn't try to cuss. It's the Freedoms Network social network. Still hanging in there, folks. Uh, the, the link to a link to a link. So my problem here today, I just want to get this out. For those of you that are listening to me, that are interested in the mining law, and especially the guys at Jefferson Mining District, uh, listen up here. I, if you can help me out for next, I won't be able to get to this for at least two days now. But, um, something came through in a, in a source, and this is my problem. The source, I don't know if I necessarily trust it, but it's okay. I mean, it's like this neutral source. But we want to know about this. Uh, if you remember how we've uh, got three demands before the president relative to the injunction that he has not answered, uh, it came through this news, and it wasn't. I'm really not interested in what the report is uh, through unsubstantiated sources. And I would ask someone to substantiate this to me, and if you will, make a uh, give me a couple links on how you substantiated for me. It would take up some. It won't take. So I won't have to. Uh, I can do this quicker. I guess the point is, if you can do this. Uh, send me a link at Mark on the Beast at protonmail.com with the, the the proof of whether or not this story is actually true, not because of the immigration, but because the president. They're saying here that President Trump is about to. Well, here they start. I'm, I'm all messed up. I wouldn't plan on talking about this, but uh, there's they're talking just like that sort of for all uh, public um, author. And, and they always cite sources within the government, like sources within the Kremlin said. This story starts the same way. I don't like that. That's why we gotta, I gotta have someone if you can help me. Although I'm gonna have to do this eventually, but I won't be able to get to it till about Tuesday, I think. The sources within the administration are saying that President Trump is going to invoke the Insurrection Act. Now that he's gonna do it for the purpose of immigration. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the fact that we have a letter, those of you that are in Jefferson Mine District know this, we have a letter of demand on the literal constitutional crisis that can only be solved by the president. He could use this act. If he's willing to pull this trigger, I want us to, I want to find out if this is legitimate because we may have a quick little thing to do here in helping this along, if you will. Remember, uh, for those of you listening, and I'm talking to my, to my guys here in the district right now, you know, I, I did. Make, I had a thought maybe to make this broadcast maybe mainly for mining law, but I realized it was a bigger story, a bigger deal in the world. So I, I decided not to go just specific to that idea because who would listen really? And it's unless you're interested in, in in the law of the land and want to do something because that's what we're trying to do. We're doing something. Uh, but I want to get back to this thing. This is an insurrection act that they talk about in 1807. Uh, this is right up our alley. 
if he's going to do it, if he's actually thinking about this, it's actually on his table right now, despite the fact he hasn't talked to us, despite the fact that he hasn't, it's, it's, by his not talking to us, he has told us that he doesn't intend to make America great again. And now we talk in this story through uh, natural news, and this is the problem. I want to go through past natural news where they got their info. I want to go back and see, is this reality or is this just a story that according to multiple senior administration officials, the president intends to invoke the tremendous powers of the act to remove illegal immigrants from the country. Well, we have an insurrection that Congress was supposed to agree to that destroy a Republican form of government. It's right in the Constitution that the executive branch of the government is authorized when they see it to actually in their inherent power to execute against. That our, that our injunction in 2013 speaks to that he knows about. Now, I want to know if this, if those of you can help Find out if this is legitimate, not just a story going through the natural news to invoke a bunch of uh, Q, Q and nonsense and all this other stuff, because he ties in a lot of this uh, political rhetoric, uh, sanctuary cities, journal terrorists, and all this other stuff. That could be too, true, too. Again, i got to qualify all this. If he's willing to go here, he's willing to execute on what we have done uh, in, that, in that 2013 notice to him, uh, case to the notice to him. So uh, I want to... I, this is so important. I wanted to get this out for anybody who's listening, and I wanted you all to hear it because this is how this is how we start working, how I start working on just scraps of information that may give us an insight on avenues of of addressing addressing very important issues in ways that have never been done before. Not that they're because they've never been done, but because they happen to be never been done, and they ought to be done. And uh, part of the problem is, is you, until you get a, a somebody in a seated decision who's in, going in the right direction, you're going to have to either get their attention and, and, and change their, their motivation. And if you can't, then you can't get them to move in the right direction to make a right decision. If this guy is already moving in this direction, this is one of the things he would use to fix the insurrection within the states where the, the thing that we enjoined in 2013 is has destroyed the Republican form of representative government that we're told is guaranteed by Congress. He's the executive arm of that. And so if you understand, those of you that have been listening to me and or those guys, those of you guys in the, the district, this is a big deal right here all of a sudden came forward. Not as if we're being told. we got to look behind this scene. If this is happening, we may have another communication that needs to go out, and I need to know that, and I would like to speed up the time. I don't want to wait till Tuesday or Wednesday before I can figure out the heads up of this and then whether or not we need to help uh, augment what we've already got before the guy. Uh, again, we're, my mind is, uh, just to you all now, we're all clear, I'm pretty clear that there's no making America great again. Uh, I'm pretty clear, and you hear me talk about it and how, not my opinion, just how things work out when they agreed to pass that public lands bill, they destroyed another part of America, they took out the primary economy of the United States of America, the people of the United States of America, there, there's a war against you. This guy, Trump, is instrumental in allowing that. He didn't even make a fuss or a muss about that. But this is exactly what we're talking about. He's either going to be pushing, he, this is either a story and it ain't happening, it's just to get everybody excited, or else uh, we, have a, we still have a problem, uh, again, in the dynamics of the administration. And if there's going to be some sort of a confusion, I want to be able to be right there to try and gain, gain any kind of advantage in the condition that I can. Right? If I find a weakness in the enemy, and until I find they're, they're my friend, I'm going to exploit whatever I can. Now, this is totally outside of any law that you might read, totally outside of anything you might hear. It's strictly how I've found out how you have to deal with these people. you got to get their attention however you get their attention. And, and I don't mean you put yourself in jeopardy or anybody else. For those of you that want to get all grandiose about how this actually works, that you're wrong. It's really subtle. The incrementalness is so subtle, you have to treat it with kid gloves, and you have to move as as subtly or less, even more subtly than it is. And and so I'd, getting back over, now I'll get back onto my tabs. Very important, if he's going to move on this, it's going to sound bad because it sounds like martial law and all, but remember, be careful on how you interpret this. We're already under civil war the, the, the organization you thought was the foundation and organic establishment changed at the Civil War, and that was never ended. Where everybody says we're in a police state, they're wrong. We're in a military state. Your states are administrative military districts. It says all this in the CIA and the laws. You can just read for this, folks. I, don't, it's not, I say this, I don't think people think in their mind I can't be, or they don't even understand how to attach it. This is a reality. 
In fact, I just got a confirmation through an email, and I know this is going to it's going to trigger a bunch of people who heard about this before and whatever all it does for you. There's some fundamental law about the gold fringe flag. I just got an email from someone that communicated with the uh, with one of the uh, a guard uh, national guard uh, units in a state, and the conversation showed that by logic and by rule that that's uh, that you're looking at a, a military jurisdiction. That's not an unknown for some people that stir, but they make too big a deal about that. Once you realize that, you shouldn't make a big deal. What you have to know is just take notice that that's the jurisdiction. And I say just res once you see the jurisdiction you're in, respond to it the proper way to avoid it. Don't engage it and challenge it. Just start doing the things that is ever inside your rights to, to avoid it. It's a whole different thought process that goes on to do this. And you, you start baffling these people when you start. I've, just, I've done it enough to know that that's what happens. So this uh, invoking the Insurrection Act is going to sound and look like military rule, but it's already military rule. Here's the point. The thing that's incrementally invaded your nation and your states is an insurrection that needs to be quelled. And the only touchstone I have is this law of the land, the literal land, to show that if that's that primary economy, that primary wealth driver in your country, in your states, in your counties, has been interfered with, you are a slave people. And you're going to be slave to the to the imposition. And so you're kind of looking at a choice. Do you do you have the you already submitted to the fact you already submitted to the fact of the war against you that you lost. Now are you going to try and force that occupier, which is now the uh, the superior force, to come in and make your peace again with the, with the states when they were in when they were invaded and, and the insurrection caused there to steal away your life, which is bringing on this next global transformation? They're telling you, and why all your state your state you're watching your states go into? Well, I don't even know what you're going into. It's really nonsense. It's a bunch of uh, lunatics and uh, Glo uh, religious adherents that are now running your your state. You don't want to be separation of church and state. You should have kept Gaia out of your out of your legislatures, and you should have kept the global governance uh, fear mongering out of your out of your country. And you you should attack the Udall Foundation for the the hub of the organizer of how the method that they use is 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 extended throughout metastasizing throughout the country. As I said last week, and point out all this, folks. I just just tell me what's going on, and I'll tell you. Probably, I don't know everybody and everything, but there's a few core people that are involved, or group, not people, but groups. And I always get people. I know, I know the bigger picture, and they tell me this little bitty, this little bitty thing that's not incidental to the bigger picture. They think it's such a big deal. You got to control this over here. Well, no, yeah, okay, you, that's a, one of the points. But let me let me explain this other condition over here that we've been looking at. And all of a sudden, the, the, the conversation stops. There's a big deal going on here. And it all depends on who you are and where you're going to fall in. And if you don't, you're, going to, you're just going to be taken down incrementally. Your life is, you're going to be dealt with and moved into austerity and the prosperity, the shared prosperity, the shared obligation and duty. Your rights are going to be humanistic rights, and those are privileges and obligations. Those are duties and privileges. Those are not rights. They talk about them as rights. But they're obligations. They're like obligations and duties, but but without without any um, authority behind them. They're really more duties and obligations. This is the future that they want. This is the future they're getting. Why? Because you're crickets. Anyway, so getting over to this is a new thing. I didn't think about to talk about it. I haven't researched it. If they're going to invoke the Insurrection Act and they're going to fix the actual insurrection, or if this guy Trump is in the direction to think about that based in immigration, we can take a bit of that and we can say, okay, while you're here, while you're doing that, why don't you go fix these problems? It's not our opinion and it's not just an idea and it doesn't, it's, it's not some, some uh, patriot answer, uh, you know, that we're going to fix everything. What it's going to do is it's going to correct an insurrection invasion that happened that nobody noticed. And every one of your states happened, every one of you is affected, whether you understand it or not, whether you want to excuse it away or not, or whether you want to agree to it but then not think about it more. This is a complete route in this country. And so let me just leave it there. Anybody that can help uh, find that out, I'd appreciate it. It would save me about three days to start looking at it and whether or not even if we can uh, engage it. But um, let me go back now to where I was going to start. This is an older story, but it came back up this week because it's an ongoing saga of destruction. And you, you almost find willful destruction 
through one of the utilities in your life, the energy sector, and this is another thing when you start looking at how what they're attacking, they're going to attack this. These modern societies need energy. That's one of the pin control points. It's not that there's a control that there's a utility system that's a problem. It's that who's going to control that and how they control it, and the fact of the uh, administration around how they control that. So utility, your utility commissions, all that. I've told you how your smart meters are coming through. How you uh, in the states that, that, that you have to go there. And I told you one of the main things you're going to focus on in your states will be that you'll have this alternative dispute resolution that can be done, but that it's got a savings clause that must be regarded, or shall, excuse me, this is imperative, not a must, it's a shall, that shall be regarded before alternative dispute resolution is used. And alternative dis dis dispute resolution is the method we sued as a destruction of your way of life. And that's that what, what people would call most closely under aligned to that Hegelian process that uh, that everyone's got so popularized that no one understood what that was actually actually in play in their life. They always look at these like, uh, well, like this is the problem with AJ. Throw you a look at it here. Look at this big deal right here. Look at the Gulf. Look at that. Look at this psyop. They talk about the Hegelian dialogue. You didn't realize that all those days and all these years that have been gone on, your city counties and all your local jurisdictions, your state jurisdictions, the federal jurisdiction have been doing that right underneath your nose on holy less. Uh, uh, sensational topics. And so they desensitize you to be able to just become a parrot for the, the Hegelian dialectic. You go ahead and pass it off like you think you know what it's doing. You don't realize that though, by the time you got it all figured out, another half of your rights have been stolen somehow. Another cost demands upon your life and your livelihood have, have, have been stolen right now. And what did I tell you that the Tim's case that we read, I took so much time to read, it says right in there from the Supreme Court, even this is if you look at the occupier even says this, and this is why this becomes so important for me, it says you cannot be affected punitively in your livelihood. Now why are you all, if that's the case, why are you all allowing it? Why are we sitting back and allowing this so-called, you can put it in any name, Agenda 21, you, you can put it in all these, uh, the carbon deal, the climate change, the sustainable cities, the modernization acts. I told you all about these years and years ago coming to the federal side. Your federal government's coming down with the militaristic side of this. And you haven't stepped up and said, well, wait a minute now, we had to wait till Tim's, but here it says, you cannot be affected in your livelihood at all on a punitive measure. And all this stuff is punitive, because why? Why, did I, why is that, folks? Why would this be punitive coming out the gate? I, don't know, I haven't said it because I'm hoping people put this together, what I've been saying. I want people to, you got to engage your brain. You really have to engage that brain in, a pro, in the proper way. It's punitive. Why? Because I've also explained to you, and I, when I showed a couple of people early, early on, the people that you, you may have heard elsewhere now, now really getting a lot of, uh, a lot of following, when I pointed out, first of all, that civil rights statute said, you, look at what your civil rights really is and look at where the authority is and look at what the authority is. And I mean that in actual authority, the power to hurt you. And then I said, now go over here in this section. I think it was in Title VII, wasn't it? Those of you that can follow what I was saying and kind of know where I'm going. That man, not human. See, humanists have their animal rights. A man has a different status, is not included because you're working through agency and legal legalisms with government. But man and mankind in title, I think it's seven, and reflected in 21, says that man is a pest animal. Remember that? And so whatever you do is, a, is an irreparable harm to the religion of Gaia, green religion, whatever you want to call it, or those that think that well, we're just dirty monkeys, and that somehow they're a little bit higher. You understand that. They think they're a little bit better than you, and they can dictate to you. So man is considered, or mankind, including women, don't get triggered, are, is considered a pest animal. If you go read clear, read carefully in the code, the United States Code. And now that gets me over to, over to Title 50, where you live in a military occupation. It says so, and it says all the exceptions in there to the government. Don't poison people. Don't poison humans. Don't poison. Don't don't biologically radiate. Don't do all this stuff. Except you're if you're the government and have its have its license. And so you start putting all this together, and your mind has to go through kind of it does its own flips and flops as you start to reorient to a reality. 
if you're considered a pest animal and we're in the pesticide section, they can do about anything they want to get rid of the pest animal, can't they? And when they come out and they say that the pest animal is creating too much carbon load and it's killing our earth just because they said so, they can do anything they need to get control you, can't they? As long as you stay crickets to that and allow someone to treat you as a pest animal instead of the man or a woman that you are having the responsibility. Understand this is all legalism as well. You're, as a man or woman, you're in a law, you're in a moral capacity. They don't have a jurisdiction to transcend that. Not as a church, but as the actual reality. You start been listening to what I've been saying. You start putting this together. It's a different thought process you can come to that you don't allow. Again, it's you find out that you are innocent. You find these people have made a construct around you that really is mind-boggling. But it has a deeper roots. Why it's so why it is so deeply mind-boggling. And we and I don't go there much, but that's you know it's there once you get here. You know what you know what it's about. That little voice starts talking to you in different ways, and it's not just the voice in your head. It's actual an authority that you better listen to, given you're on the right path. That's where you start to see what the truth of all this starts to be. Otherwise, you you, you make up your truths that are not. They're memes. They're the memification. That uh, there's a wholly different world to see, and you can pull yourself into innocence. Once you see your position of innocence, then you start seeing all the attachments that We've had constructed, and in, in, like I say now, the, the silent weapon for quiet war, the place they have you plugged into. You start looking for those things that shows you how how you are uh, interpreted and have done the things that you've done. So you are deemed that, but you're not that. And then you're not the things also that they've done in legalisms, make these fictions that everybody called the straw man and thought, oh, I see the straw man, it's a lie on this, all this other stuff. You didn't realize the mechanism underlying that. The foundation was entirely within the system, and you never figured something out. You never figured out. They tried to do this. This is what, like the... Um, the Menard, Menard in Canada, they tried to do this, and people tried to do this, but they started commingling jurisdictions because they never learned that word. And you can't commingle jurisdictions. This is another truth of people that I've talked to, that I've, worked, I've talked to in the past, and really good guys, and we work together fairly well. I wish I would work together a little bit more. There's a whole other understanding of how this works and when you apply it. When you start understanding what I'm telling you in a application, you start realizing you can't commingle these things, but you still need a place to be. And, and so you can sit there and be, let someone call, call you names. Like I said, they can let somebody put you in a status. You can let a presumption work against you. Uh, and I don't mean it in the gen, in an all, all encompassing. They don't work that way, even though so-called patriots would believe so. There's a very particular way to address all these things, depending on what you're up to. That you, when, they, when a mischaracterization, a defamation, a misapplication, a mischaracterization happens to you, you have to fix that. But you have, to have a, you have to have a place that you put yourself that's also outside of what they're saying. Why, and let me go right quickly now to this land law, why, when you see a passage, a frame, uh, uh, when the occupier, even if it was a legitimate one, the de jure court, uh, said that the land is held in the United States of America even against the... Uh, against everyone, even the United States, is a place that's separate in a separate jurisdiction than the government. And when you understand that little thing right there, and that little passage got put in a document we, did, we just sent to inform on a judicial notice uh, a bunch of justices that don't quite got it. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. We we passed, folks. We just uh, I can only tell you if you know about football, we just did a hail mary pass. Uh, we hope the receiver is on the other end. And if the receiver, I'll just tell you if the receiver is on not on the other end, I hope you all understand what that means. Uh, it's not just that we don't have what I've been telling you. We have a very we have a very serious problem. If any of you have any uh, any compassion for being free and a people that's self-determinant down to you and your property. We are in a very serious way. Anyway, so it's not on me. We've done what we can. We'll see how this plays out. We'll see if there's a receiver at the other end that should be there, supposed to be there, whether that the receiver 
catches the ball and bobbles it, or catches the ball and makes that touchdown in law. And remember, I'm never, I'm never coming at you with my opinion about all this. We can die, uh, any one of you, I can do it, you can do it. It's right there to do. When I tell you that you, man is considered a pest animal by the fiction, by the construct, uh, you can go read that for yourself. It's not an opinion. And then you got to sit back with that and say, not just look past it, think, consider the dynamic of that and consider to start extrapolating that out. Start someplace to reorient your mind. But it's not an opinion. It sounds far-fetched, but it's not. It's not. And so once you start getting this more and more, these little points that we were told that aren't so, and you start fixing them for yourself, you're going to find out you're not the pest. You're not even supposed to be aggressed. You're not supposed to be touched. But the problem is they set, up the, set you up in a position where you've got no place to be. And I, as, I offer, as it came to my observation, as this is years ago, about halfway through my studies, I realized the mining law gave a place to be that even the United States government, the occupier, the military force, could not touch. And it was wholly different than I was explaining to myself through reading the books of the Benedict on Admiral that I was telling you I was reading up until that time. It was even in a, a different reason, which was even more powerful. So now i got two, two reasons, two pathways of the same hands-off condition, the same jurisdiction that was not to be touched. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm putting it inside what the, if, if the so-called sovereigns, the ones in power, are going to be sovereign, they're going to have to maintain an integrity and an honesty, even though we don't see it generally. But I can point to you how often that's not actually breached because we have been, or we go to their representatives called the attorneys, and they misapply what we're doing. They don't apply what we're supposed to do correctly. In fact, I'm seeing the power. And again, if you're gonna, if you're out, if you're innocent, you get to see how you get to work through all this. You don't work in it; you work about it. You have to work about it because it's about you. It's about about the condition, and it's around you. It's you were infiltrated and surrounded by it. It's like you're like a fish. You better figure out you're you're in water. And so we we address this so when these failures come up, and they realize we realize you can see where they're not supposed to do it. We just don't opine or have a a complaint, but we know better it ought to be. We say, well, no, this is your obligation. Again, and we, this came up in the mining district. Um, somebody was offering us a, a an action that was going on, and they opened up with a condition that uh, in in telling us, uh, the whole group of us, uh, their, the thing, the action that was going on, they opened up with an obligation, a condition that they said, well, we sent this letter, and this, and this organization, this entity didn't answer well, a lot of patriots, a lot of people believe if you send uh, this tacit acquiescence thing, if I send you a letter, I guess i got to clear this up quickly here. You know, I'll get to my tabs eventually here. When you Just because you send a letter to someone and you claim they have to answer and they don't, you cannot take that as acceptance. Now, I hope some mouse traps got snapped there. And we can now listen correctly. You cannot impose upon somebody, because you say so, an obligation and duty to you that if they don't answer, they now have the obligation and duty to that you say that they did and they are now in fault. You can't do that. And these are the kinds of things that you got to look for the elements of what constitutes attachments and things like that. You have to put those in your document, too. And so what we were being told was a thing that someone's, uh, some people are doing, which is great. I'm glad to hear they're doing it. But right out of the gate, I'm hearing serious failures of understanding basic principles. And if you want to go research this out, go look and see what the occupier, even the de jure courts have said about that. It is, it'll be exactly what I just told you. You can't impose an obligation on somebody just because you say so and they don't answer, then it attaches. You will have to find the obligation that you are using in order to do that. That has to be stated in the point. And if you don't do that, then you don't have, you cannot impose anything. And if you go do that, you're going to be like all the other people that have and end up being writing up a bunch of paper to get you in trouble. And the other guy, I don't, or woman, or, or whatever, even the legal entity, does not have to answer you if you're being stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D. If you're just making stuff up, they know what, listen, if you don't, you want to know another authority for that? I have the right to not associate with you. So until you can show me your warrant, now we get back to our core warrant, though. 
What's your warrant that you're even approaching me? I don't have to talk with you. But so those of you that want to talk about freedom of law and this and that, you want to say, well, I'm going to make an imposition on this thing, and if it don't answer, and, and if it doesn't answer, then it's it's agreed that it's committed a crime. You're nuts. You're completely a criminal yourself. Now, I'm not saying these people are criminals because I don't know if they understand that principle. What I'm saying because it, it requires intention to do that to be a criminal. What I'm saying is that I'm talking in the official sense. If you start doing that and think you're official, you're a criminal. Be careful. Now, you attach uh, obligation and duty by some other third, in, let's say, an instrument of evidence, and that says that they have the obligation and duty? This is how you're making standing anyway in a court case, if you haven't understand what I'm saying. You've got to have standing. You've got to say, that party who, by this agreement, by this document, by this undertaking, or X, Y, Z, whatever, obligates them to me to do this, and that obligates, that, uh, that element was here in this part that said they were supposed to do this. They failed and caused me harm. That's a proper complaint. Now, from there you say, you have, based on this agreement and this obligation to do so, you have to respond. And if you don't, I can at least take reliance that you failed if I needed to, depending on our, what our agreement is. We may have to go through another third party. I don't know. It depends on the subject matter. That's, hype, uh, that's a conjecture on my part. I'm pointing out to you, there's a whole lot of other ways you start having to think about the proper application. And you don't be making it up because you think you're some sovereign man, free man authority. On the other hand, you don't not act because you're, you think you are, but you don't have to respond. If someone's aggressing you, you have to stop. A trespasser, bad, don't fix itself. A, a trespasser has to be stopped. And so I don't think I'm talking too quickly here or too fast on any kind of esoteric principles. But this is what we were presented, and I was fine. I don't, I don't mind hearing people's uh, uh, endeavors. But for me, I'm qualifying uh, whether or not that's proper for for my research or what, whether I'm going, going to do something with it. And I hear a lot of this coming down. Again, let's, say, let's go back to this invoking an insurrection. I'm not talking we're going to write a letter. I'm just not coming out of the blue cold calling uh, the President of the United States with a letter and saying, you have to do this. No, we have a lineage, uh, a right, from the authorities that are recognized by that power to go and do what we're doing in his office and through his office and it's still only a request. And it's only going to maintain that because we don't have the power, do we, as a people? If you want to feel that power is in the people, I'm going to show you real quick that you actually don't have it, and we're back to the, the Civil War problem. The best we can do is continue to push and argue the part of the failure of the occupier at this point. And then yet, we push in that, like I said, we really simple statement, folks, that these mining claims, and this, it, all of you, all y'all that are renters and uh, on patent land, and you all y'all that have patents you can identify, it all pertains to you as well. These are held against the government itself. The government has no power over you. Now, they'll try to bring some power to you, but we're going to find, well, I won't go through the whole thing. I've mentioned in pieces and parts over years how they don't, they can do all the arguments. That's just attorneys making legalisms out of what the law required obligations and duties on the government not to touch. And the patents will tell you how long. Forever. So when I have that anyone cannot address, uh, address the problem, even the United States government forever, I've got a pretty nice place to settle, don't I? I have that castle that's not supposed to be infringed, don't I? And it's not infringed, it's not encroached by these legalisms because those those legalisms, uh, the, the, uh, the courts, don't have jurisdiction. Now, back to the word I I told you that most people don't quite get to over a subject matter. And I say that, you know, I'm wondering if you even understand what I'm saying. How does the court not have it? Well, it says it in the statute. If you go look, that it's against everyone that this patent. So how are they getting you in? They probably stick you in commerce and you agree. You become mischaracterized as a commerce entity, doing the commerce thing. Because I've, I've told you all this stuff before, and I'm kind of getting lost in my thoughts here a little bit to try and keep going on. I'll tell you, it's, it's, I'm just repeating myself. I don't know why I get so much uh, slack and why I don't have much, why I don't have, see millions of people listening in. What? Well, because they haven't been listening. A million haven't listened and left. If a million listened and left, and then all of a sudden I see change happening in another six months, I would say, well, I guess I did something there. People did hear me. But until those millions show up and... Uh, this broadcast and start understanding what I'm saying. We're we're kind of toast here, folks. And there's going to be a little crew of guys out of Jefferson Mining District that are pulling off 
a pretty pretty big deal, uh, and only to the extent that the occupier can move. And and I'm a, I'm concerned, even though I'm it's the only thing it's the last weapon we have to embarrass them into doing something correctly and or making enough non-opinionated facts for everybody to see in the proper way that not even the occupier itself, even a disure officer, can deny that enough people, I mean enough people, see what is really going on that you all act in the proper way. In other words, you can't sit there even after you see it. You have to figure out what you're going to do within the context of this problem. And this is what we're looking at. What I've been looking at, and what I think everybody understands but won't want to, doesn't want to develop it more than a more than an opinion. As I said before, we are in a serious way, and it's going to take the people to stop being divis, divis, divided, stop working on all your social, economic, environmental nonsense that they keep throwing and foisting on you and the psyops that they're doing. Stop all that and start looking at this more correctly. If you don't, we're toast. We're just toast. And uh, it doesn't take, it doesn't, it's not, don't worry about all the rest of the population, but it's going to take enough of us. And so I come every every week, uh, hope out of mind in a way. I don't see it happening. I see a little band of merry men in the Germany district that are pulling some, some interesting and cool stuff off. But And this little story with the Invocation of Insurrection Act reminds me of that. Why is that being invo invoked right now? It's not like it hasn't been invoked. So don't think that we're doing a martial law. They did it in, I think, in L.A. or something over some riots. They do this periodically. They have these tools to come in and, it's under police powers. It's underneath the the right of the government to keep peace for everybody. People will blow this out of out of place, but I can see a very direct correlation to what the letters we have before the president on a constitutional crisis that's guaranteed by Congress to be executed upon by him. That I'm almost hoping this is a cover. This immigration thing's a cover for that. But this would be just we'd never know. But uh, I guess I want to extend this to you all too, not just the guy, uh, JMD guys. Uh, that if this is coming in as a stealth move, this would be pretty brilliant, actually. I can see, that, I don't expect it, because I don't think anybody's here that brilliant. I don't care how much he calls himself a genius. But I can see it. I can see this coming in just as stealthy and as effective as anything else. And so I guess I'm asking you all to put your mind to that. And those of you at JMD understand that this, this is an interesting development about this uh, invoking the Insurrection Act. It all comes in the time after what we have the notices and uh, no response. And so, don't know if there's a connection or not. Let me get on to a continuing problem that's going to be, be harassing y'all and has been harassing y'all out there where uh, in California with PG&E. I've moved these tabs way up. They got buried like a lot of this stuff does, but it's become relevant today. The PG&E, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric in California, and all those fires that have been going on and all this stuff and the scant coverage I've been given to it, but I think it's been complete enough to keep a keep a, a tab on what's going on. It came up in the news again relative to the campfire and who caused that. And uh, I didn't read the report on that, but there's too many little uh, things I wanted, too many problems with the way they're reporting it that are very consistent with the tub fire. That I bring the tub fire report up, that was done a year before that, and the findings on that. But I wanted to point out something here. Not the PG&E and the fire. Those are serious. Those are problems. You need, you need, if you guys live in California, you need to jump on this because these people are going to, this, this company's going to kill you all. Uh, and that's not going to help the Forest Service is not, is not helping that with their urban, uh, rural divide problem in their interfaces with the public, for, the public lands and their, in their national forests and their mismanagement of all that, which we keep track of and we have to because of the subject matter of the land of the Jefferson Mining District information, um, uh, view on all this production. We have a pretty wide comprehensive scope to look at that brings and pulls all this together. It also allows us to see this other insurrection that's come in uh, through the, what, we call it Agenda 21. The attorneys doing it, remember, they're promoting uh, sustainable development. Uh, and it's a, it's a crime against us. It's a big fraud, a big treason. Uh, no one wants to really kind of go there and understand how. They, they'll say it. Lots of people can say it, but it's a difference between just being able to say it because you heard it and be able to track back how. And I want you all to be able to look at your problems and track back how. Go to the beginning point. No, and don't don't just let knowledge, uh, the, just for the sake of it, do much. I mean, you know, I can talk to you lots about how a lot of this stuff is created and who the 
originators are, but we're more past the origination. We're now into people are working to destroy you. There's armies of people destroying us. Companies are doing it. We all focus on the corporatocracy problem, and corporations are getting above us and over us and controlling us. And I'm just going to let you know we're letting it because there's many avenues on how we stop this. In the news from a while back, after the Tubbs fire and the and the damage happened to be the second worst fire in California history, uh, almost a, not quite a year later, the campfire in Paradise pops up is is the worst, and I want to tie these things together because there's something that's very important to understand when you're studying how to out figure out what's going on. I've told you that sometimes there's a lot of information in the in the omission, and look for the omissions. Remember, felonies can be co committed by omission. If a commission by omission is even um, is not oxymoron, is not an oxymoron, uh, you can omit to do something that becomes the felony. And this is a very interesting observation. The sound, the silence between the sound is very important to keep a track of. It's somehow, sometimes how I can track through things and people don't understand what they're looking at. And I'm tracking, I'm saying, here's the, let me put it in less esoteric. You have to be read enough to know what ought to have happened. Now, this is ought, because there's a rule that says someone should follow it. Must follow it doesn't mean an imperative. They can make mistakes. But if it's written down as an objective basis that they ought to file it, follow it, and they didn't, that's an omission. You're not going to see a record of the omission. You have to know it's an omission by you keeping track, keeping right on the point of the facts, and don't lose your sight on that. Keep yourself in the moment of your study so that you can keep track of the things that didn't happen. It's a whole other train of thought going on. You're going through, okay, well, this official was supposed to do this because you've read about that they have to do that. And then you read to past that point, your mind should stop and say, they failed to do that. You document that point, the, the omission to do something. At that point, you're going to start finding why the train starts to come off the track, but you're going to have an, an objective basis that the official was supposed to do. Well, let's say he's just a non-official trespasser. But there may be a principle they were supposed to regard that they didn't. And when they didn't regard it, that created their obligation and duty to you. And so I'm pointing out again as I started this conversation without I even knowing I was going to go there by going through this insurrection thing. You have you can't just attach somebody because so you say you have to put a demand on someone in a letter they don't answer you. And all of a sudden that makes them liable to you. No, you have to be able to go back to the beginning of your rights and know what they are and know how someone transgressed you where they are omitting to fulfill the law. They're operating in a silent area. You have to identify that. And this PGE uh, condition is um, when you, you have to go read some of the reports, it shows you how that works. And right in front of your face, they're telling you something if you were to look a little deeper. And then it, it okay, so it, and it comes into one of these agenda things as well. But a while back, PGE claims rates could skyrocket fivefold. If it order, it was ordered to clear trees and inspect electricity system, uh, caught my mind and my laugh, my 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 crazy bone here, my little laugh bone. I I started laughing for some reason. I didn't know why. I, I mean, it just are these people that stupid that they would actually say that to a judge? The PG&E claimed that the, their rates would skyrocket if they were told that they, if they were ordered to clear the trees and inspect their electrical system. Folks, don't you think that's part of the deal for them? For it, it, it's a company. It's a utility. PG&E warned in, in a new court filing that it would have to spend at least 75 billion, as a B, folks, 75 billion, hire 650,000 workers and increase monthly utility bills by a huge amount. The huge, a huge, eight with an H. If it's forced to comply with a federal judge's proposed order for a massive maintenance and inspection effort for its electricity grid. First of all, you should be terrified if you're around this company that they're not doing this. They should be doing it as a matter of course. This judge ends up catching that. Because I ask immediately about that. Do they want to go there? They're telling you folks that they've, they are not going to invest this uh, this maintenance, and they'll do it even if it's going to hurt you. And they'll fight and, and, and claw against having to do it even if a federal judge tells them. is not a public utility company that I'd want to be living around. 
first of all. But they, it actually came out of their mouth in, in official, in a formal way here, folks. If you don't understand the danger you're all in. And again, I could read on and on. This is fascinating stuff. They, they tried to go through the bankruptcy thing, essentially, and they're on the bank brink of insolvency. Well, I think they are insolvent now. But see, that's, that insolvency doesn't kill them. That's what, that's one of the good things about, about, about bankruptcy. It was the wisdom of was that we, well since we're working on fiction anyway and fantasy fiat we don't have to destroy our people we don't have to destroy our instrumentalities our governments we'll just put them on new gut, judge judge uh, um, reviewed operations and we'll try to get them back into being more operating operating better even your local insurance for cars is written the same way that, that was a measure to mitigate the harm otherwise. A, a loss, a, a, a direct loss, could destroy a company. And they didn't. The government didn't want that to happen. They, they wanted the commerce to continue. So they said, "Well, what's the better answer? The better answer is to make this insurance system. So if you get a judgment against you, now they they ought, they do this backwards. Now you have to have the insurance. No, it was supposed to be done after, and your payments were based on the judgment. If you go read your your motor vehicle code, you'll see that's inside there. If you read about insurance." Insurance was supposed to come after a judgment of the court, otherwise it was a taking. But we've gone so far away from understanding all this stuff, people don't understand how to, how to begin looking at this, that this company comes in and says, I'm going to, we're going to be insolvent. The judge says, yeah, but insolvency doesn't mean you can't go do the inspections. In fact, it, it's part of what you have to do to run the, run the, run the system. My, my word to you is this, this company intends to not do what it means to keep you in danger. Remember, the other reports was this company in one year had caused 14 of the 15 fires in those areas that had lots of trees. So this is a, I don't know what to, I don't know how far to go with this. Is If you're not interested, it doesn't matter, I guess. But those of you that live in this area really should pay attention to this. Another report back then said that PGE shares surge are halted after company cleared of the deadliest 217 wildfire. So in 217, there was one fire that they didn't have, and the, again, the People who are at Wall Street, they cause the value of that stock to go up. This is all just playing games. So they're all looking. This became news. This wasn't news that they that their system was dilapidated and they aren't going to do it, aren't going to inspect it and bring it up. They're not going to keep the nature away from uh, the infrastructure. No, as soon as that the, they weren't under liability under one of the fires, investors jumped in, speculators jumped in. Again, this is your life. This is not really something that your power, your home power should be anywhere. Even your society's power should be based in. And and I guess my main focus, this company was willing to tell a judge, well, if you make us, make us maintain our system, you're going to cause us lots of money, and that's going to go back to the rate payer. Well, that's a truth and a non-truth. I mean, you're supposed to do it anyway, but you have to go to the Utilities company, Commission and, and petition for that. Now, you are you all are supposed to be on the other side saying, no, they can't do that. That's part of the that's part of what they do. If they can't manage their system, we need to get a new new manager of the system. Call it what you want. Call it PG&E. Call it, call it utilities company. Call it whatever. They're supposed to supply power, and they're obligated to do it safely and continuously. It's all in the law, folks, if you just read. We don't have to be subjected to this nonsense. Uh, pointing out a dynamic, though. This is the year before the campfire, remember? And in this, and it was in these stories where these, where other, uh, where other truths coming out, if you took just a bit, a bit of time to start reading around. I'm not interested in all this necessarily, but I understand, I need to under, I need to know the battlefield. We're up against this stuff, if some people are, in the 5G. We're up against this sort of thing in the smart meters. We're up against this with any corporation that's looking out for its bottom line, which they are mandated by law to look out for, not your safety, their, their fiscal health. And that ties us back to what the government's all about, about the commerce and the, gover the economy of the nation, the GDP and all that stuff. It's all pretty much all that it's focused on. And so we, I, I look at this stuff because I don't know where the enemy's sitting and how they're doing this stuff to cause all these abilities to go into so-called uh, commissions that are supposed to be giving the, a license to continue to do their harm. And until you see that, you can't even begin to address this. And so I say, based on that suggestion, they're cleared in one case, but in another case they're saying, well, we, you can't, if you force us to maintain our system, it's going to cost a lot of money and the ratepayers are going to be 
are going to be penalized. In that case, the judge saw through the nonsense. I was shocked to even hear it to the point that I made a tweet about long back. It says, is this an admission that PG&E has been derelict in its obligations and duties to cut trees and inspect the system without that funding? Does it really want to go there? A judge is going to allow that? These are rhetorical questions. Obviously, they don't want to do that, but they're telling you they're going there. What did I say there in particular for what I was saying before about assessing some obligation and duty to someone and the default of the answer of which to solve the problem? Then you claim is right here, the obligation and duty to clear the trees. You have to go to the law that says that they have to do that. Once you do that, now they now you have your connection that if they you see by their admission that they don't, that you can bring that as a cause, and you can bring that as another cause against them on top of this case. And I don't like that myself, but that's where we are. And these, this is again, we're back into equity. We're not into, we're not suing them for money. We're suing them to do their duty, and because of the harm to you. And the prospective harm is also actual, though the, the courts are trying to say that they're not. It is, and you just have to know that. You have to research enough to hear this stuff. So I'm, I'm, I was shocked to see that they would even broach the idea because. The, that's just obviously saying, again, rhetorical question. They are derelict, folks. They don't care about your safety. They don't care they're burning up the forests and the trees and the houses. This is a year before the campfire, and nobody really moved it. So where did I say before about looking in the silence? Let's get back a little bit to that, the omission. These guys are pretty clever. And I guess that's the other reason I'm, I'm interested to read where I where I find. Sometimes you don't see much, but sometimes you you, you can find it. And I found a little bit in this tub fire report that happened before, a year before the campfire, and I think it's relevant to now the determination that happened today because all the words about how they decided it were uh, the same. They put the liability onto the corporation, which is not really going to do much of anything, but they did it in a way that's not really criminally culpable. Even though they could, because we also know the PG&E, I think, has multiple felonies against it as a corporation. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know about many felons that have many rights after they go through that that can continue to do what they're doing to continue to hurt people. And this is one of the failures and one of the things that the Bar Association figured out how to pull out so that we couldn't kill these corporations, uh, civ make them civilly dead, like any patriot wouldn't have heard a long time ago, make them civilly dead so they can't function. And so they would stop harming, killing people. But uh, in the Tubbs report, for the PG&E and the fire, I want to talk, speak now to the silence that was sitting there, a glaring silence. You, I, you really have to read that report and keep your mind on what's going on. They're very clever. You can pick up on it because their wording starts to get kind of fuzzy, kind of weird. You start to say, they're, they're trying, your intuition will tell you, they're trying to hide something here. You don't know what it is, but you have to keep reading. And you start pulling these, uh, these, these details together, the silence, the omissions to speak about certain things and how you pick some of that up in this time in this report. I have links to my blog, to my Twitter that, that I, I saved for that for this purpose to talk to you about then. You're, you have to keep the dots together and how I identified the silence in particular places was that they weren't silent in other places on the same subject matter in the same report. And so there's a little technique on think on how you, you how you go through looking at what someone's telling you and what they're trying to figure, and then you figure out what they're not telling you, but you can use what they did tell you before on one thing that they ought to have told you on another in the same capacity, and then they don't. And you then, that's not the point. You just remember what it was they didn't speak about. What part? Didn't they, and you have to start making a list over there. So this is all done in your mind as in real time or as you're writing notes if you have a chance to listen to or read a report or whatever. I was highlighting things and copying over to a notepad keeping track of certain things and just anomalies until I could start making sense of it. Now, this Tubbs Pyre is an interesting report. And if you go read through it, I find it very interesting on, again, the silence. That in the report, and this is where we're going to start pointing out where the potential problem is, and this points out to another failure, another type of silence that you didn't hear on them complaining that they have to clear the trees away from their lines or maintain the system, is what kind of a system are they building? is a, another type of a problem here that starts to be uh, evidenced in this Tubbs fire, which we already know is a problem from those of you that are in, well, I'm going to lead you now, with smart meters. Because in the report, they talk about all kinds of interesting things, and they do mention smart meters. But it was only relevant to other properties, not where, where appears the fire, they say the fire started. And in these documents, you'll be reading for 
where the problem may be starting. Because they always point to the fire. The, 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 it's what I found interesting is they'll say it was the, the lines, the power lines that were causing it. And yet you'd read the report, and they have an omission to something that's inside the report. And they actually state that they give a question as to whether the lines could be there. They have evidence it looks like it might be. You see all the conditional words. And then you find this glaring silence within the report, where in this case, and you'll get, again, if you want to go through and follow this a little bit, there's a whole lot more. I'm only doing this through Twitter just to kind of tell people, you know, we got a problem with a lot of this. If you folks are in California and you folks are dealing with PG&E and, you're dealing, and the officials that are there and the people who write the reports and the Utilities Commission, there's a secret going on right in front of your face, and unless you identify it, you won't be able to call them on it, and they're going to continue to kill people. But they mention in these documents at page 29, again, just two of a many, that they didn't talk about the, the investigators assisted the, for, the, when they did the so-called forensics about the study of this. They assisted in the removal of smart meters. You get to page 54. I started on page 29 when I get this message. This is one note that I had. And I got to page 54, and they talk about something else. They said, quote, the, that they collected the weatherhead and associated conductor was found and later collected. The weatherhead and associated conductor was found and later collected. Now, when you read in context, they explain what they have been collecting all this time through various properties. They assisted in the removal of smart meters, but they didn't say they were assisted in removal at that one property where they found the weatherhead and associated conductor. In fact, there was no meter there mentioned. There was no meter there at all identified. And it is where, adjacent to that, to the house, adjacent there, was where the fire started. The omission is that they collected smart meters everywhere else but this one, this one piece of evidence. The weatherhead and associated conductor was not attached to a meter, was it? And so, right here, and there's a, quite a few other things, you start to see that they were hedging and fudging about what actually caused the fire. Because they didn't say there was the fire was caused by that part. They actually can't refer to it, right? Because it's not there. If they mention it, they have to have collected it. But they didn't collect that smart meter there. It wasn't even in the, in the connected parts they did collect. How, folks? I mean, the place that they were there didn't, didn't, was it, didn't, didn't suffer a bill? At any rate, the point is that they mentioned they're removing smart meters. They don't remember, mention one there. They mention collecting the things that would have been attached to the smart meter, and they don't mention that. But when you look very carefully, they don't blame the power lines and tubs, and they don't blame the smart meters, which is the very thing they need to protect against, which means, for those of you in California and everywhere else, this is a high-level secret that they need to cover up, and they're doing it by omission. Now, we come to today as we move through this thing, well, one more story here that I got a while back, that the federal judge looked at the case here, and he looked at the evidence, and he blasts the criminal PGE's clear-cut pattern of starting fires. We have a serial arsonist in California called the PG&E, as determined by a judge, if you wanted to, a higher level than myself here to, to say. I'm showing you that in the silence of the reports, it says the very same thing. And they're getting away with it. And they're going to continue to get away with it until someone down there... And anyway, it's going to be all over the place here. For These smart meters are just blowing up and causing problems. And I'm not talking the radiation and all that. They're just dangerous pieces of equipment. Now, if you settle too much on this, I'm going to watch, show you ahead of time. Or I'll explain to you. You're walking yourself into a problem that they will... They can. They haven't yet. But they can make these things much more robust so they don't do this. And so if you impliedly agree to the smart meter at all, They'll fix that part that's causing the failure, and then you'll have, you'll be stuck with the other problems of the smart meter after you've argued this wrong. And they get you down into, they change the question. You, you ask the wrong question, you're going to get the right answer, first of all, or they offer you the wrong question, and then they change the only solutions you have. But I've also Twittered that out through another comment that came through, a video that explains in a, in a parody of a condition uh, how they can get you to think anything they want, get you to be voting in any direction they want by simple adjustment of terms and twists of phrase, and then offering you something that's uh, offering you something that you think is a complete and right answer, and, you, and they've trapped you. In this case, they're offering up an absence of something, and you don't know that. 
And so you look right past the very problem that they're trying to hide. Perfect. These people are brilliant, actually. Uh, so federal, but a federal judge looks in this PG&E thing. This is overall, folks. This is all well, in, their, in their Chapter 11 bankruptcy thing. And they, they, he determines a clear-cut pattern of starting fires. I don't know why more people didn't jump on this. Clear-cut pattern, folks. That's not getting into RICO. When you, and those of you that are in 5G, excuse me, in smart meters, which 5G is a part and not the direct part, so be careful in jumping over into there too fast. You're going to have to make a real hard connection to that. But the smart meter condition, if I'm showing you, if the judge just said there's a clear-cut pattern and I'm explaining you there's a RICO, and you have a motive for why this is going on, you have another avenue of attack on the smart meter. Because that's the thing they're trying to protect that they're not going to mention. They're going to mention that, oh, it looks and appears that this started on a, on a power line. And it wasn't a power line at all. When you look at the evidence, they didn't even mention there was a smart meter location. There ought to have been attached to the, to the, uh, to the things they did collect for their forensic study. And the person, the, the, the author of the study knows how to write that to keep that away from you. And that's where I started. This guy was the really slick, but he wasn't that slick. I was, I was putting myself in his position. Like, why would I talk like that? If I'm standing there on that ground and I'm, and I'm looking at something and looking at what he's describing to me, and I, man, in my mind's eye, I say this, I picture this thing. Why would I speak like he's speaking? There's something wrong here. You gotta put yourself in the moment. It's kind of like I tell you, build your chronology. Put yourself in the moment of the times, in the sequential times. Get your mind into that space, not just look at it at a distance and document a, a sequence of times. No, put yourself down in the time. At this time, this set of conditions was happening relative to this issue. And then something else happened in time right after, in this set. Don't look at it from afar. Put yourself into the situation. Put yourself into the report. You can only look through this report. You can only know what they said, but you can start thinking, well, why would they speak like that? And after a while, something bubbles up inside that speaks to you. Then you have to go track that back and verify because sometimes your mind will miss stuff. I had to do it on this. It took a little while to kind of work through this, so I started seeing it. But now I have a clear-cut pattern determined by a judge. I'm not working toward RICO, for those of you that are looking around this stuff. I don't know what's going to stop these people. All I know is if I can get enough people that are going to go uh, take it up that they want, don't want to see their houses burn and their forests burn but with the aid of the Forest Service who doesn't care to go look at this either and, and, and doesn't do their, interfa their urban interfaces very nicely, then you're going to have a lot more damage to property. You're going to have a lot more of this agenda being coming on as, you, as you're hearing. They're not allowing you to build or you've got to do new standards. Like I told you it was going to come on. Uh, another thing that just occurred to me, it gets you away from the DEW nonsense. It puts you on the ground where it's the cause is real. There's a function behind this, and if you keep going DEW, you're not going to go to that smart meter. You're not going to go to this the investigate the maintenance of their systems, their excuse, oh, it'll cost us money. Folks, that was already supposed to be factored in. So now I'm wondering if whether or not the court, uh, they just gave, uh, told the court a fraud because now they just told, they've been stealing the money for that all this time. Did you think about maybe that one while I was talking? See, it's lots to be looking at. If we want to handle the problems that we face, and I don't think this is a small one because of the fire potential and the people that die. People die around this. Property is destroyed. Lives are destroyed. A way of life is also destroyed. And I don't mean you just live in a suburbia around the trees. I'm talking about the way they move the agenda in. I'm talking about the costs that they now come on you even more. They admitted that they don't do the maintenance that was required under the law for them to do, and they've already taken the money for them for that. Boy, didn't that raise, raise red flags over like the Klamath Removal Project. No one has the right to do what they're doing. They've been stealing from the rate payers up in, in, uh, in Oregon uh, now, uh, the Klamath River system there, uh, for years. Going to partnerships. Stakeholders, folks. These are... All the same agenda I keep talking about is you don't think it go, you think it's just PG and a corporation and corporatocracy? No, 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 no. Stop. Back up and start literally looking at this stuff. This is killing people. Following a series of massive fires, series now in this court case, along with, uh, along its 125,000 miles of power lines over the last two years, uh, Judge uh, William Alsup, who is overseeing PG and E's probation for safety violations that led to felony convictions for the 2010 explosion of one of its gas pipelines, which killed eight people, didn't back down from his criticism of the utility despite being told he had overreached. Quote, 
Usually a criminal on probation is forthcoming and admits what they need to admit. You haven't admitted much. Alsup told lawyers, attorneys, for the company at hearing Wednesday in a federal court in San Francisco. There's a clear pattern here the P, that PG&E is starting these fires, is a quote out of the judge, what he said from this report. I don't know what more you need for those of you that are sitting under this, uh, this threat, this arsonist in California, or really anywhere else you start to see it, it manifests itself. I don't know what more you need to start your, stu your study, folks. Uh, there's a path here, pathway. I'm, I've got to just, I think this is what can start you on it. If you live around the forest, especially the ones around the forest, because it gets so out of hand. Those of you in the urban wild interface up there uh, in, the, in California, these stories in a line, the way they wrote that report are line items in a statement of how you show these people are really organized criminals and they're getting away with it. And what they're, how they're going about, you point out, see, it's one thing to have an opinion. It's much better and easier to be able to present your opinion when you have the very fact of it. And that's what I try to show you you do in the record. And you can move this thing along. One more story here is all these you know, things I had together that I, I had to blow by because there's so much to talk about. PG&E power lines cause California's deadliest fire. Another report about who the causation of what this is. It's not DEW. And when you go read the reports, it's not DEW. I want to get those people that you want to put that kind of energy in that. Why don't you put into something substantial and go stop this problem? Stop wasting your time and stop hurting other people by misdirecting them. Investigators with the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection have concluded the Pacific Gas and Electric Equipment, equipment, they didn't say power lines, and this is the problem, it's their equipment at the meter, remember. Pacific Gas and Electric Equipment caused a devastating campfire that destroyed nearly 14,000 homes and killed 85 people, mostly most of them elderly. So guess who they're preying on now, I suppose. Now, I don't have to talk about it more, folks. They said equipment. They didn't say power lines. Be very careful on the subtle omission. It's the same omission that they did in the Tubbs fire. The official report. Yet you tear through that report very with a fine tooth comb. You do a forensic study on the report, and you start to see a different picture. And you can start compiling this stuff in order to make it so that you are effective in what you say, that you have the power to stop the power here. When you have some official documentation, go ahead and use it. What's the problem with that? Now, I made a comment to that story. Uh, S-M-A-R-T, SMART, is implicitly shown in the report, I was referring to the Tubbs vote, in the absence of the crucial evidence mentioned and not completely described and not collected, and absence of any evidence of any meter at that home. I don't remember power lines proven a uh, cause in that report. A disappointment? Yeah, they're disappointed. The CEO is disappointed because 5G is going to get caught here, folks, through the smart meter. The thing that they call equipment and the thing they won't identify and the thing they won't, they'll talk to, but they won't say was found at the place of the, of the fire. They'll get you right up into the area and unless you put your mind mentally down right where they're talking and stand there in the mind's eye, stand there and look and remember what you're supposed to be seeing in a normal installation and then go read the report on what and look for what's missing in that, you probably will miss that little detail. And it's one little, as I'm thinking about, this is a very important tool that you need to develop in yourself. Putting yourself exactly, don't make it up, put yourself right where you, and you have to, you have to kind of make it up a bit because you have to, you've never been there and never seen it. But go through whatever evidence you have and stand on the ground. Stand wherever you have to stand and in your mind's eye, look at your environment. Analyze it for what is supposed to be there by what you think is supposed to be there by the objective basis, not what you think like opinion. If I have a power a drop, I know I'm going to have to have a wire, a head. I'm going to have to have a, a, a conduit down to a box. And in that box is going to be a, a, a neck is going to be a, a meter, and inside that's going to be some phenolic, and inside that's going to be some copper wires and some insulation, and below that's going to be another conduit and, uh, and a post, folks. I'm going to have a post, and it's going to be attached in a certain way with certain hardware. I'm standing there looking at it. When I see a report that only says I've got the, 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 the head and the, and the conduit, I'm missing a whole lot of parts there. 
The omission tells me something. The lack of information tells me something. And then they called that equipment. But what was missing? Now, you have to go deeper even. What I'm trying to point out to you today is you're going to be doing some studies, whether that's forensics in the law, really getting deep down and actually understanding the condition, whether it's forensics of a report, whether it's looking at the condition uh, you need to get down and look at everything and even the things that are not there. Am I making stuff up about that? No, it's condition. Am I saying there was a meter and not meter? Well, they said there was meters in that area. Those are done on a class, and, and it was within the confines of a place where they had installed them, and that was the, the place where the fire started is the only one that didn't say there was a meter there. Within the context of the report, I can say that they did not say there was a meter there. Why? Well, maybe we're focused on the problem, right? And that attaches to a bigger agenda. I don't get that out of the report. I get that of a more comprehensive understanding of what's going on in this country. And so you have to bring what you bring. You have to bring, you have to be, when I say you got to be there, you have to be there. You have to have a lots in you when you do it. You're not going to do it by thinking uh, in a chat room or just kind of looking out in the world and seeing all the problems. It doesn't come that way. None of this comes that way. I, I guess I wish it was by osmosis you could just pick it up, but it, there, there's, we're being hit by so from so many places. We just need all of us to start looking at these problems and starting to dig in. Those of you that are natural investigators, dig in here, folks. You don't even may not even be the guy or gal that 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 can move the next step. I don't know. Like I said, I think people move, working in teams of three would be nice. If you can't do anything else, find two more of you that work that just need to fix this. One of you might be the investigator that can pour through this like I would do it, pull out all the, the facts, and then I'd hand it off to the next the next uh, interested, um, you know, activist, if I can call it that, or the helper, the whatever, whatever your team is going to be, your crew, and I hand it off what I found to them, and they're better at doing the next step. And then you hand it off to the, to the final one that's better to execute all that once you compile it all together, and you prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt what you're doing, whatever it is. Some of that will take more more work than others. So this, this looking in, I guess the point about some of this forensics came from this, this article here coming on, really looking deep, really looking sharp. And when you look into, as you do your investigation, like I tell the miners, become the investigative reporter when you're confronted by, uh, especially uh, especially the, um, the, the, the agents, the government officials, become an investigative reporter. Same thing here. You're going to reanalyze reports. You're going to do a, a forensic study. You're going to pick it apart for everything. And uh, so we move on now in this theme of forensics uh, relative to uh, I wanted to I want to show you how you look at stuff in order to become effective in what you do to extract out what you may not be explained, but what comes out in, in other ways like this judge saying, well, you guys are serial arsonists. You guys are felons. Normally you're more forthcoming. That's all elements, folks. That they're not forthcoming is a is a problem for them now. If you if you were to empower that by stating it as a as an element for what's going on and multiple, if they do this multiple times. You have to have the predicate. The word just slipped from my mind. It starts with the P R E. Predicate acts. Excuse me. Uh, predicate acts to, in a, in a, like a RICO. You, I can see them. They're already there. You have it all. Those of you that want to stop this or get to work, put a lot of pressure here to stop the, the death and destruction, it's right there to do. In other words, I don't look at the news uh, to be told, oh, this is what the news is. No, I'm looking at it for, they're telling me this, this is the notice, and yet it's a lie. There's something in it that's a lie. The omission is a lie. When they blame it on equipment without saying specifically what, the, like let's say it's a smart meter, it is a smart meter, and they f omit to say that, and I know that it's attached to a different agenda to do that. Why they, the motive for that? That's a crime. Because when you're also getting to the point that they don't want to inspect for the actual fault. And that's, if you don't if you do that wrong, you're never going to solve it and more people continue to be at risk. Why I'm so, what I tell you, even if climate change was correct, but they have it wrong and they do the wrong thing, they could bring on more death and destruction by the doing the wrong thing instead of actually being honest about what is, what is actually the cause. And it looks very clearly right now, if you're talking global warming and we're going into global cooling, all your so-called mitigation is going to be to hasten death. 
And then you find out for those of us that want to research farther, that is the point. They want to hasten death. They want to have population control. Right? So we have another motive. We have another mechanism. We can tie it together. Nice, close dots. Now, whether or not that goes beyond a reasonable doubt, or whether or not reasonable doubt is the crime you're going to charge, or we can go less for just be reason, just a, a lesser standard uh, for a conviction in a civil side. That's up to the up to the remedy that you choose. But to sit back and just complain about it and laugh at it and do nothing while they're coming and killing us is not going to work. So we go into the story of forensics investigation. Another serious problem. Again, again, right in the thing I talked about all the time: the military consequence that you live under, the military occupation you be locally. The administrative division of the state is, you think you've got states' rights. No, they're administrative military districts. So we can find all the proof for that. Just go through the codes. I've, I mentioned them periodically. Forensics investigation finds cops shot each other, then murdered the Houston couple. Remember the Houston couple that was supposedly uh, invaded, uh, their, their house was invaded, and they were blamed to be drug dealers? Well, it finds out the forensic investigation after the police investigation found that the cops shot each other, and then they murdered the Houston couple as in blaming and uh, to, you know, uh, again, you're too smart to be, uh, too smart and too psychologically stable to be a cop. Folks, we have a problem there, for those of you that want to step up. In particular, I kind of like Texas. All you guys in, uh, in Texas, you want to don't mess with Texas, they're messing with you. It's time for you to step up in the proper way. You, take, you can take some of this little study. I don't know where you're going to go with it because I'm not really focused on that. But you have some serious, serious problems with the military down there and the costumes of the police, the peacekeepers that are killing people, making stories up and, not, and getting away with a lot of it until it gets so bad that they can't. And then only a few people get taken down. It doesn't adjust the system. The murder of an innocent Houston, I would like to say the innocent couple, right? Because they never went through due process. They never, they never enjoyed the final decision to the Supreme Court denying you your right to have your, your case reviewed when they did not, when they said you were guilty. You didn't even get that. These people were shot, murdered, executed right on the spot. As I told you, it was coming. And as I told you, you have the right, you have the ability to start. You better push back, or it's going to get worse. The murder of an innocent Houston couple made national headlines earlier this year as police took a smearing took to smearing their names and threatening those who didn't believe their, their, their official narrative. As the months passed, we learned that the Houston Police Department's raid on the homes of Dennis Tuttle and Regina Nicholas was based on lies, and they were murdered for no reason. Now, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of uh, opinion here, and that's fine. Uh, it's a serious thing. I don't want to, I'm, again, I'm just reading the, the context here. None of this stuff has actually been proven except the forensic report that shows that the evidence indicates different than the official narrative. Now the case has reached a turning point after the family hired a forensic expert to examine the home and found that there is no evidence that the officers encountered gunfire. Now I can go on and on and on. You go through, you read it. It took someone who, set, who's, who has trained themselves to think very clearly and very openly and look at all evidence and not disregard anything in order to go through and counter the official narrative. This is telling you that is on you now. We live in that time when the presumption of innocence is absolutely gone. The presumption of, of a sovereign power to kill you is absolutely there, and you will have to overcome that. This is not a good sign for those of you that think that you're living in a in a society at all where you think that you have rights that weren't encumbered by a military occupation. That is continues because you allow it to continue. I'm not saying everything will be perfect. The angels don't sing just because you get involved. The point was, as we keep as I keep referring to Thomas Jefferson saying it took a m educated mass who were vigilant. We haven't been for tons of time, if, I, I mean, if time can be tons, that this thing has gone off the rails so far it's going to take a whole lot more work that I see in this story the method of how you get come, start to come back. You start to move this thing backwards by other people doing what they find they have to do. Apparently this is a good, to my mind, this violated people's conscience enough that they did hire the forensics expert. Whether or not that would stand up in a court, I don't know. This is not about that, though. This is about getting this fact out to people and start to put pressure onto the authorita that believes it can make this stuff up, come in, be the Keystone Cops, and then shoot innocent people to try and cover that up. 
Then we get to the part what the tactics are on how these these goons are now le the attorneys have told them how to avoid the problem simply by re resigning if they have to, and that all of a sudden now that's supposed to exonerate the problem. All that has to be fixed anymore, even in face of the military consequence. Because remember, what did they say? The Supreme Court, Tim's is really an interesting case. The more I think about it, uh, we, we did include the summary of that case applied to that to the letter we just sent, the no judicial notice uh, equity enforcement we just sent to the to the Supreme Court. That case that says that these people were had the right not to be have their lives taken uh, down to a livelihood uh, on this, and not that I want to diminish their lives being taken based to that, but you're starting if you see what happens here, you have the power to bring to the local jurisdictions that would allow and train or not scrutinize their officers to get well, that allow them to consider that officers can get to here to do this. That they think they can get away with it at all and they can fabricate this stuff in the moment. That they think that that'll get them out of it. That they can even go there has to be stopped. But Tim starts to show you an authority that their military officers have to follow. It may not be enough, but it's a start for those of you that don't know where to begin. You keep asking me, what do I have to learn? What, what, that. That's what I'm telling you. Go read that. That's how you apply it. The problem is you have, haven't made a decision on what to do, what wrong you need to make right. That's, the, to me, the, mid, the, 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 the big impediment. You're not going to learn enough because there's nothing you're going to focus on. And as soon as you jump in, you'll be learning plenty. And it won't be in a negative way. I mean, I mean, not that learning not learning is always a good thing. What I'm saying is that you're going to be learning on a focused attack to stop a harm, which likely, because of the, you know, good people listening to this broadcast, you're you're likely going to do it for a bigger cause. I just I just have to have faith that's what goes on. Some of us will do it for the private cause, and that's okay too. You got to learn that part. But a lot of this stuff is societal. And you save it for yourself, and you speak in terms of saving it for others, and you will, and you're standing better than if you tried to say I'm doing this selfishly. And so it took a forensic that someone had to hire. In other words, cha-ching out of your pocket. It should never be like this. And so I said should, but it is. That's reality. You have to kind of look in the world and say, well, if nothing's happened to me now, but look at if it does, what I'm going to have to do. That's if I'm alive. It's almost like a business investment that they've enforced on everybody that as the adjustment, the military starts adjusting to steal more from you and justify it. You have to start putting out more buffer, if you will, and typically that's all done in cash. In other words, if you don't build that reserve, even in the fiat, and it happens to you, the likelihood of you surviving is as likely as these people who died who were innocent. We have a big systemic problem. I don't know how to solve it all. I can just tell you if we do nothing, we're gonna get, it's gonna get worse because bad don't fix itself. And if you don't do that and you don't get engaged, you're not gonna have the experience in order to know how. I mean, not even to start. And in so many people I talk with, when we talk about, I'm, more, I'm listening to what they say, especially when I worked with them and we talk and how they address something. I'm listening to what they're learning, how they're responding. I don't care the mistakes. I really don't care about, especially if they've recovered. If they have a mistake, we'll fix the mistake. That's easy. What I'm looking at is someone who didn't get succumb to becoming a slave to a false authority, who didn't, who's still standing there in front of me and didn't get shot who didn't get beat down. There's a, a big self-evident proof I'm standing here looking at someone who's going through a problem that they worked on and feeling that they did, they made a mistake. And I said, no, your mistakes are fixable because you're still here to fix them. This thing isn't so cut and dry. And if you don't walk in to, into it, you may feel bad about you didn't do quite it. Maybe you put your standard up against someone like myself. You hear my words and you think you got to meet that standard. It's not that tedious. It's not that uh, strenuous. What the point is, is are you learning on how to move around the mistakes you make? Because you can make them. The ones you can't make are the ones that are final. And I try to show you how to stay away from that. This kind of a condition, that's a surprise attack on you. You can't fix that one. These people were oblivious to this attack, as oblivious as you'd be if someone came in under community care or some trumped-up charge and kicked your door in, shot your dog, and then shot the guy behind me. Uh, I was shot by the guy behind me, and so I shot the guy that I'm staring at and shot his wife too. Because it's i got to protect my brother. 
They're going to protect that blue line. Not even smart enough to know that there may be a difference in the caliber of gun being used when the bullet recovered. Fascinating what goes on. This is criminal mindsets. This is a surprise attack. You can't you can't know enough to protect yourself against this one, folks. So if you're not also not jumping in and doing something, taking the leave and even my leave, you don't have to even follow what I'm saying. Uh, well, it's to the point that I'm saying keep out of jeopardy. Follow that much. But if you're not going to help jump in for yourself, even on the small stuff, you'll never be prepared for the tougher stuff, and you cannot. Nobody. I could not be prepared for something like that. That's a societal thing that we have to come to terms with on a, on a bigger bigger scale. Now, it's, I'm not saying it's not possible. If I turned my attention to something like that, be, if I was living in Houston and I felt that threatened, which I would probably start to feel kind of threatened, and I had to, and I could turn my attention to that. I think within about six eight, six months to a year, a group of people could solve that, could get that straightened up. And so I'm just saying that you just got to turn your attention to it. I'm not there. I don't have that problem. I don't think in the area that we are. Although we do have community care as an overriding condition, but now we, if I, if I'm now going to, if I was going to turn my attention to that instead of what we're doing, I can now know I have the Tim's case to say. Uh, in that other case, it says that the, 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 you can't apply community care in that regard. It fails. That reasoning fails. Well, community care is also attached to Agenda 21. <laughs> so there. See how fast you got there without even knowing it? It's the same thing with the, what was it, Enhanced 911. I use the word enhance. I use the code word. It's, it got, it's international imposition. Enhanced 911. You didn't know 911 was that way, but I can, you can now know that the Enhanced 911 was exactly that condition. It's tied into the global data circuit and the global construction, which community care is then uh, dispatched for. And so you, if you jump in, you, you are going to be attaching the main problems of our life wrongly imposed that have become normal. The new normal, it's all, you're already suffering it. These people took, these people, I shouldn't say these, Dennis Tuttle and Regina Nicholas. I'm going to go by name. They're innocent. They paid the ultimate price. You think there's a soldier here? You think you think these people don't deserve the highest honors? We better really change what we think is going on in the world about who we think are the heroes here. At any rate, so forensics, folks, is going to turn. It turns the tide. It's you just getting involved. I don't know. You forensically investigate whatever it is. You have to put your own cat thinking cap on. Look with a clear mind at what's supposed to be. As I tell you, look as today is look at the omission. Look at the omission, but you have to have a mind of what ought to have been in reality. Now you don't make up this stuff. Ought to have been in reality as applied to the PG&E. What would I see if I'm standing outside a home? It's gone too because it's all burned up. What if I'm if I go to a normal uh, mo mobile home or mobile home, uh, 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 a regular home? What am I going to see hooked up to the power company? Then I compare that, you have to know that in your mind's eye, and then, and then attach that to the report and say, wait a minute, they're missing a whole bunch of parts and pieces here, aren't they? And then you see they suddenly say, oh, it was just pg and &E equipment. It's the same kind of application looking into the omission of things. The anal forensic analysis starts to play into, that starts to be able to counter what the, uh, the oppressor is doing, the criminal is doing, what PG&E is trying to get off. The last statement that PG&E did to the state legislature is hauled into the state legislature. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to believe me until we start doing better. Well, he's a felon, folks. I mean, his company's a felon. He's the head of a felon, felony company. And he's, he's already quite, the company through their attorneys have said they don't want to invest 75 billion that they stole from the people because they haven't done the investment in any way with the money they got. And everyone looks right past this crime going on. It, it's, that's us, folks. That's where we have to step in because nobody else has. In fact, that's another. See, these concepts are con constant. They're constant and universal. The principles of failure. I just stated that to the Supreme Court. I said no official having the duty and obligation. See, folks, you got to tie the duty and obligation. The duty and obligation stop. The crime, the ongoing crime. I said it a different way. I want to. I'm not going to tell you what we wrote, but. Not quite yet. The, the point is that these principles of failure are universal in, in this country right now. To me, I don't know what the problem is anymore. Except I know it's not one letter going to go somewhere. It's going to have a lot of letters with a lot of persistence and intention behind them. 
not with emotion, not with a, a fantastical opinions. No, right on the point, right on the ground, right on, on the obligation and duty that's found. I'm a poet and don't know it, folks. Former Merck scientist Sue Merck alleging MMR vaccine if, if efficacy fraud. If you're not the insider, become the insider, a lot of these things don't happen. So we're going to move a little bit from you looking from external reports and being able to start to extract things that are going on that I can show you. Absolutely start tying into the, the global governance condition, even in this, these United States of America. And it's because of that whole system that's just to put a veneer of controlled governance over you that you didn't stop. And I can penetrate through myself, my mind, my my the rationale, the law allows me, not me, but I the rationale go through the law, no different than you found out that the man can't ha have his livelihood affected in Tim's, even if he's got a penalty, it can't go to the to the to the livelihood. I can bore right down in there. I already knew that. That was confirmation. You can too. We bore right to that. We cut through a lot of this nonsense. We cut through the layer they built on us that looks like like an obstruction. It looks like a, the, the real foundation. No different than the false front spaghetti western I tell you we live in. When you walk into those buildings, they have a false floor. And so you have to understand that's the case. And then you say, well, I'm not going to believe that false floor is a fraud. And this is where we ought to have been. And you didn't have a right to make that false floor. And so you have to have enough awareness to be able to do this. Because you have to have another reality of the way it was supposed to be. In other words, the savings clauses I talked to you about are the base organic reality that the veneer was supposed to regard. And they don't. And that's where you catch them. You find the obligation and duty that's objectively printed, not because you made it up because they didn't answer you. No, you go find it where they were written down before they got there and said you had to do this and they failed. That's how the court can find it was a felony. That's what I tell you, even this land stuff, that's how you catch them in doing extortion or coercion. Not because you feel that you're coerced, or not because you feel you were extorted against, it's because they, they three or four elements that cr that happened that caused that to be the case. Now, less esoteric, maybe, if you haven't put, if you didn't, my mind, if your mind didn't go through together to show what that was under extortion, remember, that's the property violation. Coercion is the, is the violation against the rights or the, to the property or independently. Two different functions, property and rights. Extortion on property, coercion on rights. In property, if someone under a color of official authority without warrant interferes with a property that they didn't have a right to touch underneath that color of authority, that's a felony. If they omit to do something that causes an interference and interjection, that's a felony. If they hand in that color without warrant uh, this, the, the rights of the property to a third party, that's a felony. If they omit to do something that allows a third party to gain interest in the property without right, that's a felony. Move over to coercion. Identical, but to the rights of pertinent a property or on their own. I hope I'm saying this slow enough for you guys. Once you do that, you got them, and once you get the elements of what I said, they're officials in a capacity, they had no right, no warrant. It's a quo warranto comes up, doesn't it? Right there. And so then you, you, you identify if you didn't have a clue, you have an obligation to tell me and a duty. And if you fail to answer, now we have them where I can show you have no right to trespass my property and you are in official capacity that this law says you couldn't trespass right here and you're doing it. Why I'm in, why I'm writing this letter. Now your failure to answer becomes actionable, doesn't it? If not a admission and confession, correct? See how a little bit different there? Because I know I try to tie the front of this broadcast to now. So, we have to have someone inside, and then there's mechanisms to work. And the mechanisms ought to work a certain way. When we, if you will, forensically analyze these things, you take ourselves out of the emotion. We take ourselves, we either do the investigative reporter mode, or we're doing this forensic analysis of this, this condition. We now move on to, let's say, you now we're moving into a little more to the former Merck scientist that, that uh, alleging MMR vaccine eff efficacy fraud. I'm not really into the vaccine here. I'm into what, what happened, a dynamic. Stephen A. Crawling and Joan A. Wachowski, former Merck virologist, blew the whistle by filing a quietam action lawsuit, U.S. versus Merck and Company, in August 2010. 
The scientists allege that the efficacy tests for measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, MMR, were faked. The document was unsealed in June of 2012. This is a major federal case alleging fraud in vaccine testing. It encapsulates how medical research can be manipulated to achieve desired results and why it, why it may be wise to question the integrity and the validity of science-based medicine. I'll end there. Excellent point. Excellent position here. But you have to go back to the Kwaitan. I wanted to know when I saw that. Did the United States enter in to defend this as a Kwaitam? Do you know what a Kwaitam is? It's the whistleblower style statutes. It's the old writ. It's like an old, uh, excuse me, it's an old action, a common law action. It has some things that have to go on there. One of the things is when you make the claim under Kwaitam for the federal government, you have to wait 60 days and see whether or not the United States government will take the case and defend it, uh, prosecute it for you. As soon as I saw Quitam and vaccines, and my n comprehensive knowledge knows that this is being set up by the government itself, and I'm not looking at the vaccines except for the subject matter, I had a big question right there. Because the question kind of turns on a prediction. Because I think we know what's going on, and yet no one wants to go at it properly. And I, wanna, and I looked at this, I said, well, here's another way to get at this. And they kind of touched it right there in that next paragraph. Is this a, 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 able to question the integrity and the validity of science-based medicine? It's worse than that. It's actually, I say, wor it's better for you if you engage this. It's worse for them than that. Because the question, when I saw Kwai Tam, and I know the government is instrumental. Title 50 tells me it's instrumental, and the vaccine court tells me it's instrumental, and the agency's in action to the harm in, in, in causing the vaccine court, uh, the Congress causing the vaccine court to be existent and not testing the safety, and a quiet tam action where the government has to step up and defend against its own actions was a logic rationale that said and predicts they could not and they would not. A backwards proof proving that they're doing you harm, folks, and then you find out how is that question. And so quite here's my, my twi Twitter right after I read the first part of that. And I think this might have came through uh, Gary L. Uh, through the Twitter. Again, I just see this stuff. Little things pick up cues in my mind. Uh, yeah, we can go down the vaccine thing. For those of you that are vaccines, this is a monster deal right here. I don't want to go. I talked to you about that before. I mean, these things before. You have to be willing to step into it. You want to start testing for safety. I think this is the avenue. And here's how what I think this happens in a, in a spark of an inspiration. When I see the failures, I can predict the failure, and then it moves into the next cause. Kwai Tom raised a red flag as I'm talking on Twitter. Back to, I guess it is Gary L. Uh, would government intervene and expose FDA failing to independently test and the government's purchase, co-conspiracy to purchase vaccines it already knows has not been tested? I say, I ask that would the government intervene to expose uh, FDA failings to independently test and government purchase co-conspiracy? Why? Because Quitam requires a 60-day cooling off period for the government to figure out if it's going to prosecute your case. If it doesn't after 60 days, you prosecute it on your own. It's, this is where you are one of those private attorney generals, right here, if you want to know what those are. You're doing it as a whistleblower. Well, the, the, the prediction I would have based on the Cokins on the the problem of this conflict of interest the government has with its uh, w with this industry would be that it wouldn't it would not engage it would not take on and prosecute the case it would have to have its attorneys go after itself so I put in the Twitter survey says go read through the article and it finally tells you like I said about two thirds of the way through or three quarters you finally find the answer survey says. Federal Gov declined to intervene in the whistleblower suit. I say, in response to that, perfect. An avenue to mandate independent safety tests to enjoin fraud, waste, and abuse. Why do I say it like that, folks? Because there's a whole condition behind the government has laws about stopping fraud, waste, and abuse. You can plug in this condition to each one of those words, and you could 
courts to stop each one would require, you could insist, if the court would, you could, again, you still have to set the case up. You could mandate in equity now, again, equity, not suing common law because I got harms and all, oh, I got these itches and I got these bumps. No, you sue the government in equity. They owe an obligation to make sure that even to themselves, especially a taxpayer can do this one. You want to call yourself a taxpayer? Here, this is this one's for you too, not just vaccines. Because there's fraud, waste, and abuse. They're taking money from the coffers and buying these these uh, these these um, vaccines that people from the inside have shown you are improper. The government of which didn't want to prosecute. You'd think that they'd want to, don't you, folks? But see, there's a condition, and so you can predict that they wouldn't. Why? Because they'd have to uncover their own crime. That's fraud, waste, and abuse. There's a whole section of law about Congress wanting to curb that. Now you want to become a private attorney general? You want to stop? You want to start getting more correction on vaccines? I looked at this story, and that's what came to my mind. In the first two paragraphs, folks. Did it come to you? I hope some. I hope it did for somebody, even if you weren't interested in this. I mean, just yeah, we can go. I kind of go through. Click, 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 click. We got the answer there. See how fast it, this is, folks. Does it mean you win? Uh, uh, no, and nothing means you win. But are you one of the people that are right on the point and really hard pressed? They're going to be hard pressed to throw you away. How, how can they say it's frivolous when you're talking about governmental fraud, waste, and abuse? Again, you're speaking the language of something that they said that they want to avoid, Congress, if you will. That you know, whistleblower talking, and you're coming as a third person to do this as well, folks if you don't get the power of how this stuff works. And so, forensically, inside, the, you can go tear through this stuff. Well, and witness to it, you can actually see failures. And you, I can pick up avenues of, a, of, of remedy, I guess is the point. Do, do you, did, I guess I go back to the story, but well, we get all wrapped up in the former vaccine scientist Sue Merck alleging MR vaccine efficacy fraud. Hey, we're going to catch him, right? No, it's not going to catch him necessarily. And what happens on a quiet town? They just get penalized. They can continue after that unless you do it more correctly. That would be the mandate, wouldn't it? An equity remedy built in uh, to this. The quiet town came as a whistleblower. That whistleblower was made public. You now are affected by this. Whereas well, the taxpayer, your your funds are now uh, being uh, abused, uh, for wasted, fraudulently. And you you piggyback this condition not as a quiet town. Well, unless you do it as a, as, a, as a taxpayer, maybe I guess you could go that way. But over in the fraud statutes, and again, I'm just trying to exercise this for you. I don't read these stories anymore necessarily, oh, because it's going to inform me on something. Oh, because, oh, now we got someone from the inside going to do it for me. No, this is not going to be done this way. What it's going to do is give me, if I was interested to do this and I was focused on it, those of you, there's tons of people in the vaccine thing. I guess that's why I don't. I have other more important things. I'm wired to do something else much more effectively than go after the vaccines. What I can tell you is the mechanisms that are there to available are applicable on every wrong like that, and so I can apply exactly what I'm doing to this. And so my mind works. I just look at words and I'm saying, what does that do in reality? I don't make it up. Quite tam is a particular thing has a certain requirement, and I say, well, if I okay, here's a theory. If the government has a conflict of interest, then the, the conflict of an interest would say that there would be no attorney from the United States government that would step up to defend this because they would have to expose their own conflict of interest in the fraud. Is that That's a pretty clear rationale, isn't it? And so let's go read through the story to see if that theory is, is confirmed. Sure enough, the United States did not enter in. So now these people have to take it on themselves to do the fraud. And here's why you hear the United States versus Merck and company. When you do that, you're doing that in the name of the United States government after the 60-day period. They just go read, go read about quiet tam. Don't make it up. Go into the statutes. You'll find that a quiet tam action can be done. They'll tell you how to do it. You don't need, Again, it's there's all in the black and white, folks. Now, you could poo-poo all that. You could say it's no good. or you or, And then you can go get your little ones inoculated underneath the same fraud that's being exposed and the waste and the abuse that's going on by it and the other frauds that are continuing. You can continue to watch the crime and just be an accessory to it. I'm asking us to stop. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I can go through all the figures. You can read it. Get on the blogcaster. I don't, I'm really, I get tired of even thinking about reading 
I just need to set the thing up. I want to know if I can inspire you. If it is an inspiration, it doesn't take much to identify some material critical positions to take in just two paragraphs of this story that I'm applying things that I'm, you don't know if you haven't read it, that you have to know if you're going to apply it, that are not spoken to, conditions, precedent, that, that are going to have to go on, that if you can put the two and two and two and two together, you're going to get all kinds of numbers. But if you put the elements together of what was supposed to happen versus, and in this case, not it predictably wouldn't if there's a conflict of interest, and then it didn't, you have your conflict of interest. You now have a failure of fiduciary. That's a, that's an, another type of breach, but you seriously have to think about it because it came from a whistleblower saying there's fraud. Now I go down to the, the simple, these are inspector general statements. These are what the inspector general will, will look, they, they look to stop uh, fraud, uh, waste, and abuse, right? Again, I'm not making any of this up. I'm just applying what they've already agreed that they'd be susceptible to. And I'm not I'm doing it as a third party to a quiet town. And I'm doing it based on the fact that, that the government didn't want to step up. You think, folks, do you think the government should step up and protect this from you, protect the, you from this? I hope you said yes. The anomaly, the silence is that they didn't. They chose not to. Again, the quiet town, you've got to go look on how this works. It's not that hard to understand. It's a remedy that's been provided by Congress. It's to do exactly what, these remedies are to do exactly what they say. They either stop organized crime or, in this case, stop fraud, waste, and abuse. All I do is state that. And you can, too. It's not that hard. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's a hassle to go through the darn thing. Why would we have to do it at all? Why isn't it stopped? Why didn't the government step up and do that? Bad don't fix itself, folks. I just keep it. I just like that statement when I came up with it for Twitter. There's all kinds of little statements I don't say, but... There's just some truths that go on, and they're going to continue. The truths are, uh, that are really just indicative that I come up with are, are just indicative of the environment we live in that we allow it to continue because we try to, we believe someone's going to fix it for us. Internal documents again here. This is like, how do you find this out unless you start doing lawsuits or, or a whistleblower or you figure out ways to get at these guys? Internal documents show 3M hid PFAs. The PFAS the dangers for decades. Not much different than Monsanto. The same story. This is um, uh, the chemical contaminant PFA, uh, PFAS is emerging as a big problem in Michigan you know, and everywhere, folks. There's, it doesn't stop. A 3M environmental specialist, in a scathing resignation letter, accused company officials of being unethical and more concerned with markets, legal defensibility, and image over environmental safety. But when it comes to PFAs and the emergency and contaminant causing a potential crisis, potential crisis, it's in there, but it's only a potential crisis throughout Michigan and the country. So you can see a bunch of limitation words in those stories. Another thing, folks, I told you the problem of water pollution, not environmentalism. The problem of water pollution is a big problem. It's, glo it's, it's, it's not only global. You think it's out there. It's actually local uh, to you, and that's your life. That's Water is life, and if you don't have that cleaned up, you don't know to clean it up is the other thing, or you don't have the right systems, and you think you know to clean it up because not every water purification is a very interesting problem. You really need to look close. There's a bunch of different dynamics that have to happen to water before you can actually begin to come close to making it clean. It's not just steaming it. It's not even just freezing it. it there's just an interesting problem with it. So. We start polluting that water, and we're getting to the point where we're not going to run away from these things that are seriously harmful to us. And the government was there to allow these companies to pollute a little a little bit. The inside, of the employees of which, some of them are getting a conscience. So the internal documents show, and they had to get this through some uh, some lawsuit, I suppose. At any rate, point is, it doesn't matter about where the, the documents is. It's now made public. You're either going to... Uh, uh, sit back and agree that this continues, or someone of you, a couple of you, agree to come together to figure out a pathway to put more pressure on on this. Uh, I don't even know where to say more than that because, because of the, the type of problem it is. I don't know what you're all going to find. Uh, I do know that what they do is they, they'll get on a miner for polluting the water when he doesn't. He's just dealing in the nature that's already there, just moving it around. That's somehow become a big, nasty pollutant. But the environment you don't hear the environmentalists going after this one. And it came from internal people bringing up the information to you, making it public. And now you have a hand, you can get a handle on it if you want. You don't have to wait around. 
Twitter's new vaccine feature won't uh, stop anti-vaxxers. And I guess I should add this out of order uh, with the other point about the FDA. Twitter vaccine uh, features won't stop anti uh, New features feature won't stop anti-vaxxers. Twitter announced Friday that it would uh, would be the least uh, the latest social media platform to intervene in searches for information relating to vaccines. Now, if you search the keywords associated with vaccines, a prompt appears that directs you to the vaccine.gov, a resource from the United States Department of, of Health and Human Services. Twitter said it also won't auto-suggest search terms that are likely to direct individuals to non-credible mon- 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 commentary and information about vaccines. I don't really, I can't really speak to the Twitter things. I don't want to get into whether or not they have the right to do all this. There's a line of reasoning that would say that they don't, given that they're using the public ways. I'm not here for that. What they're, what I want to point out here, and, I, and there's an argument to be made if it is just an argument, and maybe even if if, if this, if Jack has the Twitter guy, Jack, CEO for for you for Twitter, CEO Jack, if he's got any moral compass at all. He can be poked and prodded. I almost did it, but I didn't have enough time to really think through. I don't want to. I, mean, I don't want to make an unnecessary insult either. Uh, that if does he understand that when he that the information that people want that they will not be promoting are the things that are the harms that are found in the very documents that are not on the vaccine.gov that are in the private documentation. That how is he making that distinction? How is he is he highlighting the fact that some people are genetically predisposed to be harmed and when he doesn't allow for someone to find that information that that he is indirectly causing he in that regard if that if he couldn't find the information and that was the last time they were going to look and he blocks that information and then a little one has is pre, genetically predisposed is harmed what's his culpability here What's he doing to people? And I'm not just jumping on Jack. Cause I don't know Jack. I don't know Twitter. I just use it a little bit. I don't like a lot of this stuff. But we've got to look at the other side of the fact, the lack of proper knowledge. How does he know what non-credible commentary is? This is commentary or information? What about you start putting out the fact that there's these harms? Is that they're going to now kick you over to vaccine gov? And they do not tell you what's going on there. If they tell you, they tell you in a summary way, like omission. You have to become a forensic scientist to figure out whether or not you're not being told something. And what's the impossibility of that for you all? So I don't want to list, I don't want to really end here, but I'm going to have to, I guess, at some point. Uh, again, people, uh, the, the lack of information, the silenced information can be tell you, uh, can tell you the truth, I guess is the point. If you know what you're looking at, if you have a, an objective comparison point, forensic analysis of silence, of the lack of, of information, the omission to make a, a, of information that should have been disclosed can be considered a felony, folks. You just have to start orienting your mind for that and know that this world is not a nice and peaceful place. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking to you. We'd be all doing our thing and having a great time. And with that, I thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Make the place for us to come. Uh, make me, allow, me, allow me to come here every week. And uh, Jules over at UCU. Uh, YTV, uh, dot TV. I appreciate your simulcast and anybody else who's been re- uh, reproducing all this stuff. Thank you for all you uh, that are there and listening in. And uh, I don't get any of the likes and all that, but okay. So you guys don't want to pass the information or make the standing of the broadcast higher in the social media. I get that. I understand. Okay. Well, uh, then someone might get hurt, folks. Cause I don't know that there's anybody else that's given this kind of information and just wanting you to step up and defend yourself and those others similarly situated. Uh, thank you for this week's attention. I appreciate the time you've spent uh, listening to me. Uh, let's just get something done and do do some help for people and yourself, obviously. I'll be ne- here next week. Tech diffs or nature will. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
That's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>